However, despite the agreement, the European Council President, Donald Tusk, warned that the greatest tide of migrants and refugees is yet to come. Before the pledged an extra £115 million to tackle the crisis, with the majority going towards migrants in camps in neighbouring Syria. On Tuesday, Britain opted out of a plan to relocate 120,000 migrants across Europe, although the think tank Open Europe has estimated that the UK may still have to contribute around £150 million to the scheme. Well, joining me from Open Europe is Pavel Svediki. Well, we have heard, uh, Pavel, from the President that actually people need to put their money where their mouth is, and that includes the UK. I think the UK doesn't have a problem with, with uh, putting money towards resolving the, the Syrian crisis. The UK is already the biggest single donor among uh, European states when it comes to funding camps in neighbouring countries. Uh, and, and, and actually, when it comes to the EU budget, there is an argument to be made that this is exactly the kind of thing mm. that, um, that, that the EU should be spending money on. The problem is that the EU budget as a whole remains hugely wasteful and inefficient. Over half of it goes on subsidies to farmers and landowners and to recycling regional subsidies around, around wealthy member states. So I think the UK argument should be that there is a case to help countries that are, uh, that are overwhelmed by, by the influx of refugees, both, uh, both frontline EU member states like Greece and Italy and also uh, countries like Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan, but that uh, as a whole the, uh, the, the EU should be better at prioritising its uh, scarce resources. Right, but in in terms of £150 million, pounds, that they, they were the reports today saying that Britain may have to put that size of bill. It's not a lot of money, is it, in governmental terms? No, over, and, uh, and it's over two years as well. So, so the, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a huge amount of money, but the point still stands that the EU should, should be uh, targeting its, its, its resources much, much better. Right, but this is a crisis that looks as if it's out of control as far as European partners are concerned. How much money would you like to see the EU targeting at dealing with the refugee crisis? I don't think it's just about the money. That's obviously a big, a big part of it. But there are other steps that, that need to be taken, such as securing the EU's, uh, the Schengen area's external borders, because that is the flip side of, of having a border-free zone within Europe, uh, about actually establishing these, these uh, so-called hotspots in, uh, in, in countries like Greece and Italy and also in, uh, in transit countries, which is what the EU has been talking about for a very long time now. But there seems to be very, very little very little progress on that. So the problem is that the EU leaders simply haven't, uh, haven't tackled the root causes of this crisis. They've right. spent too much time arguing about things like mandatory quotas, which have simply toxified the, the atmosphere in Europe and divided EU leaders against each other, rather than focusing on, on the root causes. But is it sustainable for the UK not to take migrants in some sort of quota system or refugees that are already within the EU borders? Well, there's obviously... Uh, uh, a debate to be had about that, but as, for as long as the UK has an opt-out from from EU asylum policy, there is nothing that uh, there is nothing that that can be done to compel. The... No, I know it can't compel, but is it a sustainable line? Do you think? Well, I think I think it would be much harder if it, if it wasn't for the fact that the UK has already said that it will take uh, re refugees directly from the camps, uh, and these are people who are likely to be the most vulnerable and therefore uh, most most in need of immediate assistance. Uh, so the UK can actually say, well, look, by, by taking these, these people in, we are also helping to relieve the pressure on Europe because, we are, because these are people who won't, who won't then have to attempt to make the, the perilous journey. And I think there is some understanding in, in Europe for, for, the, 